Good morning, everyone. We certainly like to thank everyone for joining us. And as you can see, uh, we are having this press conference because of the the most mission critical thing that we need to do as a community, as the city, as well as this uh, state, as well as this country. And there may be other times where we have uh, this press release uh, because it's so important now that the citizen of Phoenix City and the, all through this state make sure that we continue to abide by the rules and regulation and guidelines and some of the laws that may be coming down in this crisis. It is mission critical that we obey uh, the rules that are put out there, as you can see, we're all standing a certain distance because in this case, we all have to abide because none of us are uh, uh, immune to uh, of this not happening to us. So we do want to stress to our citizen that it is mission critical that we follow the rules and guidelines of this federal government, of the state, and of our local municipality because it is important that we do. We all know that this thing is spreading rapidly. Uh, however, if we come together in unison, if we come together following those guidelines and rules, we can easily combat this and mitigate this. And we want you all to know that there may be other things in the city that are closing. This thing is ebbing and flowing. Uh, we don't know exactly how things are going to take place as far as the action from the state as well as from the city. But we do want you all to know that the most important thing is the safetyness and health and well-being of our citizens. Uh, our lives is a precious gift that has been given to us. And we have the fiduciary responsibility to make sure that we are doing everything that we can do to keep this thing in control. And I certainly want to thank the citizen of Phoenix City uh, for abiding thus far. Again, uh, there may be some other things in our community, in our municipality and city that may be closing, but it's all due for the safetyness of you. Again, I want to reiterate this, that this, it can ebb and flow. Tomorrow it may be something totally different. But I'm asking that we all stay resilient. And I'm so grateful that our city manager reached out to Representative uh, Chris Blackshear that come and bring an update from the state. Because again, we are in line with the state and there may be some things that may be closing from the state as well as from the local government. But I'd certainly like to thank uh, the people that you see standing around. Our chief of police, uh, Ray Smith to my left. Councilman at large, Griff Garden, our city manager, Wallace Hunter, State Representative Chris Blackshear, our e EMA, uh, Bob Franklin, and I see Chance, come on up. Chance Carbett is here, and also our uh, utility director, Steve Smith, is here also. But again, we do want people not to take this lightly. Stay in as much as you can. If you can, please do so. Because again, we need to get our arms around this where we can manage this as best as we can. And so again, at this time, uh, I just want to thank our city manager for getting our Representative Chris Blackshear here to discuss with you some things that are coming down from the state, which we are in line with. I know I've gotten a lot of calls about businesses closing, uh, but you got to use some common sense. And at this point, it's not mandated, but I'll let Representative Blackshear talk more about that. So at this time, I'd like to call on Representative Chris Blackshear. See Thank you, Mayor. No, norm, normally, we would, um, no, yeah, normally we would um, shake hands, and, um, and it's good to be here with you this morning. It's unfortunate circumstances that we're here. Uh, and I normally, like the mayor, just get up here and talk and, and give you facts. And I'm still going to give you the facts, but I want to make sure that I, due to the critical nature of what we're talking about, I want to make sure that I gave you the most accurate information. So I'm actually going to uh, prepare my statements for you. So as of close of business yesterday, Alabama has 196 confirmed cases of the COVID-19 virus in the state of Alabama. That's out of 1,832 tests that have been completed. So you can look at that two ways. Um, if it's the ha ha cup half full, it's the one out of 10 that are being tested is all that's being positive. Um, on the other hand, you can look at it as well too. Um, there's over 4 million residents in the state of Alabama. Um, the Alabama Department of Public Health are updating these numbers twice a day and we should have updated numbers by 11 o'clock this morning. Um, we held a co press conference yesterday afternoon or a conference call with Governor Ivey 
Uh, so I wanted to provide you some updates from that, and I'll go through each of the critical departments throughout the state and provide you an update. Number one, first and foremost, I cannot reiterate enough the importance of the social distancing and staying six foot apart. Stay at home if you're able to, work from home if you have the ability. Also, maximize your trips to the grocery store and consolidate your trips as much as possible to limit your exposure and, and outside um, ability to touch in other people. Schools are closed, most daycares are closed. In some places um, that you're forced to leave your home for on a normal day aren't open for business. So just use your best judgment with that. This is vital to flatten the curve of the spread of the virus, not to mention it will help our healthcare facilities from reaching full capacity. And if that happens, it's gonna compound the issues that we're already facing day after day. So you do have a direct impact on curving this virus and the spread of it. The Alabama Department of Public Health currently has 17 operational screen sites around the state and we expect to increase that number to 25 by the end of the week. The turnaround time for testing is 24 to 72 hours once initially testing, once the initial testing is complete and received by the laboratory. Let me stress that because a couple people have called us and I'm sure you've gotten calls here locally I haven't heard from the test it seems to have taken longer. It's 24 to 72 hours once your test sample has been received by the laboratory. So you can kind of add to that, um, be able to get your results back. Due to the limited number of test kits available, state health officials are asking citizens to not go to testing sites if you're not symptomatic or if you have not been referred by your doctor. For, for information on your locations or your test site, you can go to www.alabamapublichealth.gov or you can call 1-888-264-2256 for more information on testing sites. And it's critical to, to reemphasize that this is specific for screening locations and information around screening. This is not a 1-800 number to call and get advice, medical advice. That's to call your normal practitioner for that. All this information I am sharing has already been sent to the city manager, um, so they have the information if, if we're looking, and I'm sure we can post that, if you're not already, um, on the website that's been set up here locally at the city for more information. From a business perspective, the Commerce Secretary spoke on the small business loans, um, which are a loan duration loan with low interest rates. Alabama has been approved by the SBA, so these loans are now available to small businesses located in Alabama. These loans would be allowed for operational expenses, which includes payrolls. They've expanded what these loans can be used for, and 99.4% of all businesses in the state of Alabama are small business. So that ought to tell you the impact that this potentially has. If you have a small business and in need of help, you can visit www.madeinalabama.com and click on the floating banner at the top of the page. Um, the application is fully digital and the process should be expedited if you go to the website to do that. The Department of Labor has taken steps that will expedite certain requirements allowing citizens to get assistance more quickly. You can visit their website at www.labor.alabama.gov for more information or to file a claim. Also, we are encouraging businesses in Alabama to file unemployment on behalf of your employees if they need assistance in doing that. The Revenue Commission reported that Alabama will follow the federal timelines on filing taxes and delaying individual income tax corporate income tax, financial institutions excise tax, and business privilege tax until July 15th, 2020. For more information on that, the website is www.revenue.alabama.gov. You can scroll to the bottom to gain more information on how this may pertain specifically to you as an individual and or a business owner. I can tell you our local and state leaders are working together to make sure we're doing everything we can to make sure our community stays as safe as it can. But we need you to do your part. Stay at home and practice social distancing. If you don't take this serious yourself, please take it serious for your family, your neighbor, or someone in your community. We are all at risk for being exposed. We all have the responsibility to help protect our community, our state, and our nation. Several of you have asked me or called me and texted me of what's next. Will we be shutting down with a mandatory stay-at-home order? Um, I haven't heard this yet. However, if we don't do our part, I'm sure at some point that potentially will be an option that's laid on the table. So let's do our part and make sure that does not become a reality. Please trust your leaders are making the best decision with the most accurate information in front of them and every decision that is being made has your safety and concern in mind and at the forefront.
I'll close with this. And I was on a call the other day and, and, and an individual said this, and I think it's so true in situations like this. If you wait to make a decision when the decision has already been made for you, then you wait it too late. So just think about that. Some of the things where we're trying to be proactive with everything. As this situation continues to rapidly change, I ask you to join me in prayer for our state, our country, and all those on the front lines. And that working together, we will overcome this together. Thank you. Any questions uh, for me or any of us that are up here? Any questions from the media? When you say businesses that are uh, possibly going to close, what, is there any ones that specific that you can speak on right now? No. Uh, as I stated last week, we're not going to cross that line at this time. But what I would ask is that all business owners, as well as individual, uh, let's take it very seriously and let's use some common sense. And, and, and uh, at this time, though, you know, we don't know what's going to come down from the state, as uh, Representative Blackshear has said. But we will be in line with whatever the state says. But at this time, from a local standpoint, we are not crossing the line as far as telling businesses to close. But we will ask people just to be aware, stay informative, and make sure that they use some common sense, as all of us should be doing. I can add to that too, too Mayor. I, I can add sure. to that for you. And, and Bob, if I say something wrong, um, throw something at least six foot away from me to help, uh, get me right. Um, the Alabama Department of Public Health who is, is really the lead authority in all of this. And the Alabama Department of Public Health does not fall under the governor and or a cabinet position of the governor, but they're working closely together and they're staying in line every step of the way. You probably ask that question, you see what's already happened in Jefferson County, with them actually basically a mandatory stay at home. Well, local legislation several years ago was created to give Jefferson County and Mobile County their own public health department. So they have their own autonomy outside of the other cities and counties throughout the state. So for us here to have a mandatory stay at home or anything like that, that would have to be an initiative from the state public health department and Dr. Harris and his leadership and his board with that. So the mayor and them, they've done all they can right now at this level from limiting the access to the recreation centers and things like that. But again, we cannot stress enough, we do this, we shouldn't ride by a park and see 20 or 30 people out there swinging and having a picnic together and having a barbecue together. It, it's, it's a reason we're saying, you notice if it went from 25 at a location, now they're asking in statewide to be down to 10 or less people gathering. And I, we're just saying be smart because you don't know who's already been exposed to this virus that you're interacting with, including the few of us in this room already to this point. Yes. Top ten for public panic. We're at the very, really front end of this crisis, and I'm curious if you have a plan or a thought about that. We've seen some panic across the river in the Scobie County with shells emptying and that sort of thing. Um, how would you address the? the well, the, the panic is throughout this country. Uh, I mean, every, in every state and every city, you can see the panic, and rightfully so, that's taking place because this is something that is unprecedented. But what I will say is that we have to make sure that we stay in unison as far as following the guidelines that has been put in place, as I stated, from the federal, from the state, down to the local. Now, we have sh shut some buildings down, and there may be others coming, but the most important thing now is for people, if they don't have to get out, they should not get out. But that goes back to what I was saying as far as common sense. But the panic is already there. It's real. We know that. But I just wholeheartedly believe in my heart that uh, this is something that we can combat and, and defeat, providing that we are being the stewards that we need to be as far as battling this. And I hope that answers your question. Mr. Mayor, where, uh, where was the site or what's the site that well, right now we don't have any, and I'm going to refer to uh, Mr. Blackshear. Okay. Uh, we don't have any. He kind of alluded to this from the from the state level that there are testing sites, but I do think right now, and and, and I could be wrong, and Bob, correct me or any of you all. I think there's testing sites in Columbus, and I think they've said that it's it's opened up for this region, and I could be mistakenly for that. But I'm hoping uh, that from the state level, and I'm sure they will, and, and again, uh, Representative Blackshear will allude to that even more. But I think it's just a matter of time that it's coming. But I do want to caveat that by saying 
it would have to be hot spots, which is the phrases that are being used based on the number of, of people that has been confirmed. So I say that to say this, if there's not a lot of cases that are here, uh, and you know, we can only pray and hope that it's not, I don't know, we may not get a test site, but I'm, I'm not sure, so I'm gonna allude to represent the black shirt on that. So that website once, uh, that, how would you know if people are safe here? We do have testing. Yeah, hang on. I, 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 and, and Rob, that's a great, 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 great segue. And, I, and I'll set that up for our EMA director, Bob Franklin, in a second. But let me answer your question there. It's Alabama Public Health, altogether, dot GOV. The 1 800 number is 888 264 2256. And with that, um, I'm going to ask if our EMA director, Bob Franklin, will come up here because a lot of people are asking, one, about the test sites that you guys just asked us. Two, um, I think he can probably give you a little insight as to how we locally go about gathering test kits, uh, potential gowns, masks, other necessities that we need if we have a case that has been confirmed here in the local area because it, the federal government has pushed it down and said it is the state's responsibility which then pushes down more to the local to gather your own things that you need. So it's, it, it, it's really turned into a battle of, to Mayor's point, of hot spots are getting priority over test kits. So with that, Bob, if you want to add some comments and probably correct things that I said wrong. No, sir, you are, you are dead on. Good morning. Uh, we have had testing in Russell County. Uh, I can't give you the exact number, but it's been multiple people tested who had signs or symptoms that would have alluded to the fact that maybe they have this disease. All of the tests that have been conducted in Russell County have come back negative. So we don't have any active cases, but we have had people tested, and we're continuing to test people. Once, as, as Representative Blackshear said, the test kits are scarce, so we're, we're working on getting more of those. Um, we have gotten supplies from the, it's, it's a strategic national stockpile that's been pushed out of medical supplies. It's not a lot. It's, it's not going to get us through this whole thing, but it's, it's a start and we'll have more stuff coming. One thing I do want to address is uh, rumor control. You know, in these times, it's imperative that everybody receive the correct information. And social media is bad about pushing out inaccuracies or false information or rumors or, or just junk. Uh, FEMA has a website for rumor control where you can verify any of these things that you're hearing on social media. It's fema.gov forward slash coronavirus dash rumor dash control. So if you're getting information and you're not sure if it's facts, go to FEMA's website and verify it there. Uh, the city also has a site uh, where you can verify that information, but rumors aren't, aren't going to help us any. Thank you, Bob. Any other questions? Um, I have another question for Representative Blatchier. Uh, sir, <coughs> is there any idea for, um, and I know that this is probably, there's, there's probably not an answer to this question, but is there any idea for parents and guardians that may have children in regard to whether it be um, elementary, grade level, and college, because at this point we all know that the college students are out now. Is there um, any answer to when school will ramp back up? Is, are there dates that anybody's looking at? Can you speak to that a little bit? Well, Dr. Mackey, um, our state Board of Education superintendent, state superintendent, made a, a uh, had a press conference the other day where he mentioned that uh, with President Trump pushing down some of the standardized testing to be flattened and removed for this year, that's already been announced for the kids. If you go, if you look just here locally in our own community, um, the Phoenix City School Systems actually is on spring break this week. So even though they were quarantined at home last week, they did some virtual testing last Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, Glenwood School, the private entity here in town, is actually out for their second week. They're on spring break next week. They're actually going to be doing some of the same testing um, via the internet um, this Wednesday, Thursday, Friday as well too, virtually. Um, so to answer your question, as you see school systems individually preparing, I think that should probably lead you to what may be coming. Now, I'm not saying that, that I know something, I'm not giving the answer, I don't. Right now, the plan is, I think, well, that'd be Monday the 5th to return back to school. But if you're asking me for my personal assessment, I think that's going to be probably a struggle 
just from the just from all the preparations that are taking place on an individual basis. Russell County School System, Dr. Coley is doing the same thing as well too. And I think it's critical to make sure we understand as well too. When you're at home with your kids or whomever's at home with your kids, read with them. Just don't let them play games and stuff. They need to understand this is not an extended vacation and or an early start to their summer. And we also need to keep in mind, too, there are a lot of seniors in this community and around this nation that were looking forward to their prom, that was looking forward to walking and getting that diploma and being able to turn that tassel and hanging out and doing things for the last time with their classmates. Spring sports, um, you're looking forward to playing your senior year. And that's at the local level. That's at the, that's at the youth league level right down the street from here. You're six years old. You're getting to play in the big leagues for your first time at six. Now that's on hold. So I think it's important to understand if, if, if you don't see all the precautions and things that have taken place around this local area and around this country, if you don't think it's something serious that you need to be taken serious, I think you need to reassess your thought process around this and start getting there. Um, so I know I rambled on you with that, but I think it's, it leads it down a path of the schools is a prime example of how critical this is and what the impact is really, how deep this impact is going here, especially even locally. I'm sorry, I have one more question mm -hmm. um, in that same vein. And this is, I'm sure that this is not at the top of the priority to talk about, but while we're talking about the, the children's graduations, whether it be high school or college, is that a part of the conversation <coughs> with you all um, to leave it up to maybe local schools in regard to if there's going to be some sort of delayed ceremonies for these kids, whether it be high school or college, because parents and kids are looking forward to that opportunity. Are you all talking about that? Um, well, Dr. Mackey has you know, a separate board from us as well there that is an elected state school board and I know they're having those conversations. We haven't been privy to those conversations yet. Um, I know locally there's hope and optimism that we can get to some point to where we can do that. But again, the, the social gathering restrictions um, and the quarantine restrictions that we have around what's going on right now uh, will have to be lifted um, before we can ever execute any thoughts or plans we may have around a gathering such as that. But let's, let's hope that happens because those kids deserve that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? If not, uh, let me say this before closing. And, and that's a great question. You know, all these things that we in this country has a privilege of being involved with uh, sports, uh, social gathering, uh, education, uh, graduations, uh, events that brings this country, this state, this city together. All those things are important and, and, and it could very well means that the graduating seniors may miss their proms, may miss their marching across the stage, but what I hope that we're doing in this country, in this city, in this state, we're raising up leaders. So what I'm hoping that in spite of, if that doesn't happen for them, which is really a grandiose event, what I'm praying and hoping is that when they become leaders and they take our places, they will be able to say, we missed that, but we were a part of something to make sure that our country our state, our city got beyond that because we were the leaders that they prepared us for. All those things are important. It brings a country together, it brings a city together, it brings a state together. But the most important thing is being a part of something that's bigger than all of us, that's really for the future of our country and state and city. So what I'm hoping that one day they can say, I was a part of that to help us defeat the coronavirus of COVID-19. That's what I pray and hope for. It very well could happen that they don't have those events, but we surely hope that they're able to. But at this point, as I stated earlier, you know, this thing is ebbing and flowing and there's changes being made probably uh, right now that we'll get laid on. But what I want people to realize that our safety in this and our health is the most important thing and that we are cut from the same cloth and as we've been saying as a council, we are all in this thing together. So we all have to do our part. So with that, we want to thank everyone for joining us and let's continue to follow the rules, regulation and guidance that is put down because again, we want to make sure that everyone have the safetiness and the health that we all deserve. 
Thank you all so much.